For years, Gene Hersholt was one of the outstanding character actors of pictures. Then came the day that he was assigned to the part of the country doctor in the 20th Century Fox production of that name. And Gene Hersholt became one of the foremost stars of Hollywood. It gives us great pleasure to be able to bring you the extraordinary gifts of this great artist in the kind of role that made him famous and that he made famous. As Paul Christian, the doctor of River's End, Gene Hersholt has in store for you many hours of absorbing, heartwarming drama to high spot your Sunday afternoons this winter. And so I give you Gene Hersholt. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm sure you heard of the fellow who didn't believe in ghosts, but who just the same was afraid of them. Well, I don't believe in luck, but just the same it happens. And it happens in very strange ways. Three years ago in a little town up in Canada, five baby girls were born. Now, the birth of five little girls in Canada couldn't possibly have any effect on an actor playing character parts in Hollywood. Only it did. And because of what happened up there, I've been consistently cast in doctor roles, in pictures, and now in this new radio series for the Cheesebo Manufacturing Company. Well, I like playing doctor roles. I like the role of Dr. Paul Christian in these broadcasts. I like being on the program of a company whose products are so well known and which has been so highly recommended and regarded for so many years. <laughs> People often ask me if I'm a real doctor, if I ever studied medicine. Well, I'm not, and I haven't. But I have studied doctors in order to play convincingly the role of a doctor. And I found out a lot about doctors. And the more I found out, the greater has been my respect and admi my admiration for the medical profession. Now, I don't want to take any more time away from the show. I only started out to say something about the quintum that's bringing me luck. And they have. But then, five of a kind should bring anyone luck, shouldn't they? Thank you. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we take you to the little town of River's End, which sprawls carelessly at the crossways where the highway traverses the Sage River Road. The highway runs to the city, 70 miles away, but the river road is the most traveled. Over this road, on this particular morning... you, young lady. Oh, I'm all right, but my doll is sick. Why, you don't say. Here, let me have a look at her. Hmm. hmm. I'm afraid your doll has high sawdust pressure. Oh, do you think you can cure her, Dr. Christian? Well, the doll is pretty hard to cure, Millie. Now, oh, let me see. She mustn't have any candy. No candy? No. You eat all the candy yourself. Here. Here's something to buy it with. Oh, but Dr. Christian... Mama says I mustn't ever take money from people. Oh, but this is different. If your doll has to go without candy, there has to be some candy for her to go without. You tell Mama I gave you the money and, and everything will be all right. Gee, thank you, Dr. Christian. Oh, goodbye, Millie. Goodbye. <laughs> Dr. Christian. Morning, Mrs. Tansy. Oh, Doctor, I, I... I got that letter about your bill, and I... Oh, now, don't worry about my bill. Judy Price wrote that letter. She's back from business college, and, well, she has sort of wished to sell on me as my office girl. Oh, the letter was real nice, and I... I do want to get the bill settled just as soon as I can. Well, how much is that bill? Ten dollars. Well, Mrs. Tansy, things being as they are... I'll make you 50-50 proposition. I'll forget half of that bill. Oh, oh, I thank and you. And you forget the other half. Goodbye, Mrs. Tansy. Oh, but Dr. Christian... <laughs> Dr. Christian, I... I...
Hi, Doc. Hello, Jim. How's the missus? She's getting along first rate. Oh, that's fine. Doc, I... I don't know how to thank you for what you've done for us. If it hadn't been for you, she'd have... Oh, no, I just happened to have been there, that's all. If it hadn't been me, it would have been some other doctor. Well, just the same, I... Well, I ain't much on making a fancy speech. Oh, no, don't try, Jim. (laughs) I'm the darnest person to sleep through a speech you ever saw. But I want to do something, Doc. You can't pay that kind of a debt just with money. I owe something more. That's right. But it isn't me you owe. And sometimes, some way, you'll see your way to pay that debt. I see what you mean, Doc. Goodbye, Jim. Goodbye, Doc. Dr. Christian's office. This is Judy Price. Dr. Christian isn't in. No, I don't think he can. He's leaving today on a fishing trip. Yes, I will. Goodbye. Wait a minute, Judy. Who was that? Ed Meadows. His rheumatism's bothering him again. Oh. Well, I'd better get right over there. Oh, you'll do nothing of the sort. You're leaving on your vacation, and I'm going to see that you go. Oh, about that bill... Did you talk to Simon Schreiner this morning? Simon? Oh, yes, yes. Well, what did he say? Well, let me see now. I think he said he didn't believe it would rain. What did he say about the bill? Now, isn't that funny? I forgot to mention it. Oh, I never saw such a person. (laughs) Hello, Doctor. Hello, Roy. Now, you get out of here, Roy Davis. Dr. Christian's busy. He's getting ready to leave on his vacation. Yes, I know it. I just brought some medicine he ordered at the drugstore. Oh, well, thanks, Roy. Uh, where are you going for your trip, Doctor? Swampy Martin is going to roll me up the river to his shack. That loafer? I didn't know he had ambition enough to row anybody up the river. Oh, no, Swampy's no loafer. He's, uh, well, he's sort of a scientist. He's made a study of the river and fishing just as you made a study of drugs. Well, I was figuring on having him come around and wash my windows this afternoon, but if he's taking you on a trip, I'll get somebody else. Well, have a good time, Doc. You bet he will. Why don't you have people call you doctor instead of doc? After all, you're a physician, a graduate of medical school. Oh, no, Judy. That'd be kind of putting it on for just a country doctor. Oh, country doctor or not. You're just as capable and, and just as talented as if you were in a big hospital somewhere. No, Judy. You're wrong. I thought the same thing once. But that was a long time ago when I first came here with a nice new leather satchel full of shiny instruments and a head full of ambitious notions. Oh, I was only going to stay for a little while just to get experience. And then I was going to be a surgeon, a great surgeon. The world was going to hear from me. Well, you see... If you're trying to make me believe you're a failure... Who said anything about failure? Why, there are all sizes of jobs in this world. We can't all do the big ones. Somebody has to take care of the little ones. Say, isn't that Mrs. Weathers coming across the street? Oh, she can't be coming here. She told me only yesterday how good she was feeling. Ever so much better. Oh, but you don't know Mrs. Weathers. When she feels good, she usually feels bad because she knows that after she feels better, she'll always feel worse. Oh, Oh, she is coming here. (laughs) Are your fishing things packed? Yes, but, uh... Go on in the back room and stay there. Oh, but, Judy, wait a minute. I'll take care of Mrs. Withers. Oh, but listen. Go on in the back room and hurry. Oh, good morning, Mrs. Withers. Oh, uh, hello, Judy. A nice day, isn't it? Yes, I suppose it is for them as can enjoy it. Uh, uh, Isn't Dr. Christian in? Well, he's not here in the office. Uh, Then I'll wait. Might as well suffer here as in any other place. In what places do you usually suffer, Mrs. Withers? Oh, I I suffer all over, Judy. Well, you must get around quite a bit. Oh, but I'm used to pain. I could stand it if it wasn't for those spells I have. Oh, when they come on, they're terrible. My mind's a blank. So I've heard. Uh, Judy, did you ever have everything go black and... Hear a roar and sound in your ears? Yes. 
Once when I went through a tunnel. Oh, they last for days sometimes. Well, I, I only come out of them just long enough to eat. Uh, uh, why, um, how long will I have to sit here and wait? About five days. He's going on a fishing trip. Oh, why, why he can't do that. He can't go. I, I've got to see him. Uh, call, call him back. If you think I'm going to spoil Dr. Christian's vacation just so you can enjoy one of your spells, you're mistaken. You can put your spell off. Uh, oh, no, Judy. No, if, if I have a spell, I'll die. I'll die before he gets back. Oh, no, you won't. In fact, I'll guarantee that on the day he returns, you'll still be alive and, and kicking. So quit feeling sorry for yourself. What? What did you say? I said stop feeling sorry for yourself. There's nothing the matter with you. Why? Why, I never... All you're after is attention. Why, you... You just want people to wait on you. You snippety young minx. You can't talk to me like that. Why, what do you think I am? An empty-headed dodo? You're getting warmer. Oh, oh, you just wait. Wait until Dr. Christian comes home. I'll tell him about this. I'll tell him plenty. Judy. You can come out now. Has she gone? She's gone. And Swampy Martin's waiting for you at the river. So you better hurry. I'm leaving right away. Promise me you'll have a good vacation. And the rest of your life. I promise, Judy. Because if I don't, I know you'll be nagging me for the rest of my life. Vaseline products need no introduction to any home listening in with us today. They are simple, inexpensive, useful home remedies for many little ailments. Teach your children to avoid infections and serious troubles by reaching for the Vaseline petroleum jelly as soon as they receive even a minor wound. If the wound is slight, it may be cleansed under running water and Vaseline jelly applied immediately. And the chances are that healing will be rapid, clean, and complete. If the wound is a penetrating wound, such as a wound caused by a nail, call the doctor at once. He will, of course, approve your use of this product for first aid treatment. Now we return the microphone to Dr. Christian and his guide, Swampy, who are bound for a fishing trip up the river. Let me take the oars for a while, Swamby. Oh, you must be tired out pulling a boat all afternoon. No. I'm not tired. Anyhow, we're almost there now. Shack's just around the bend. What are the catching to do over this time of the year, Swamby? Old tomato cans, mostly. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe that's the only kind of cans that are biting. Well, you don't have to worry. Jimmy will show you the places. How old is your boy now, Swamby? Fourteen. Going on 15, and about as smart as they come. Is he still going to school? Starts in high school this fall. High school? You don't tell me. Yes, sir. That boy's going to make something of himself. Well, there's the shack. Oh, Jimmy! Jimmy! Guess he don't hear me. Mind hopping out, Doc, and tying up the boat? Just passing the line to that stump there. Wait here a minute, Doc. It's dark as all get out in there. I'll go in and light a lamp. Can't figure where Jimmy is. Well, maybe he's out catching us a mess of fish for supper. I wouldn't mind sitting down to a nice... Doc. Lake. Doc. Huh? He's in here. What? Jimmy. Laying on the floor, all doubled up. He Come don't know me. Come on with that lamp. Jimmy. Jimmy. Wait. Wait, don't touch him. Doc. What do you think is wrong? Hold the light down here. How long has he been sick? He ain't been sick. He had a kind of a stomachache the day I left. But he didn't say much about it. I thought it was just something he had. He's been here alone for two days? 
Where's the nearest phone? I don't know. There's nobody living around here. Then how the... far to the closest road? Four miles, maybe five. Well, we've got to get him back to town. The river is the quickest way. Well, that'll take three or four hours. Doc, what's the matter with him? Appendix. Ruptured, I think. Is... is it serious, Doc? Swampy. Can you stand some bad news? Jimmy's going to die. Die? Oh, no, Doc. There's one chance in ten an operation could save him. But he'd have to be fast. And we're hours away from River's End. Seventy miles from the nearest hospital. But you're a doctor. I and... haven't the equipment, Swampy. You haven't the right kind of tools. The things to work with. Well, even if I had, I wouldn't dare to risk it here. This is a case for a skilled searcher. But you can do something. I'm sorry, Swampy. There's nothing. Jimmy. Jimmy. It's me. Your dad. He don't answer me. Don't even open his eyes. He was such a smart little fella, Doc. So bright and cheerful like. And so grown up acting. He didn't hardly complain at all about being sick the day I left. Just stood there on the bank, waving to me as I went away in the boat. Waving till I got around the bend. That's the last I saw of him. Standing there, saying goodbye. And now, now, Doc, you've got to do something. He's all I have. You've got to. Swampy. Light all the lamps. Start a fire on that stone. Put some water on to boil. Get my little kid out of the boat. And get all all get all the knives you've got. Knives? Yes, kitchen knives, hunting knives, everything you've got. But Doc, Doc, you're not I'm going to operate. Say, this is Dr. Paul Christian's office, isn't it? Yes. I'd like to see the doctor. Dr. Christian isn't here. Say, what about the operation he performed? Operation? What operation? Oh, come on now. You might as well talk. We're going to catch up with Christian sooner or later anyway. Now, listen. Listen, if you don't want to tell me about the operation, tell me where he is. He's on a vacation. Okay. Okay, have it your way. But just the same... Pardon me a moment. There's someone at the door. That's all right. I'll be getting along. But I'll be back. Oh, come in, Mrs. Withers. I suppose I'll have to wait again. No, this gentleman is just leaving. Well, Mrs. Withers, I see you're still here and alive. Yes, I'm here. But that's more than you'll be when I talk to Dr. Christian. Where is he? Still fishing. Fishing? Hmm. That makes a nice story. You know as well as I do that Dr. Christian hasn't been on a fishing trip at all. What? Just look what the Morning City paper has to say. Where? Right there, under Vistas in the City. Dr. Paul Christian of River's End was seen coming out of the Palace Hotel last evening. He where... was seen coming out of the Palace Hotel. And I don't think it's possible to come out of something that you haven't gone in. Oh, I don't know. What about a chicken coming out of an egg? Oh, well, chickens have nothing to do with it. You've lied to me, deceived me. Who's deceived who about what? Oh, oh, Dr. Christian. Oh, Judy, she she's deceived me about chickens coming out of eggs. And, oh, oh, I'm going to hell spell. Oh, no. Oh, but I am. Oh, Doctor, I, I feel awful. Here now, sit down. Just relax. You see if you're running a little feeble. Open the mouth. Now close. That's it, Judy. Get my stethoscope, mm. will you? Thanks. How was the trip? Oh, fine. Pretty hot. Now open, Mrs. Withers. Did you say 
pretty hot. Mm-hmm. Hot as I've ever seen it. Oh, but, Doctor, what does that mean? Oh, usually violent electrical disturbances in the interior. Oh, oh, my. Oh, what uh, what does a person do when that happens? Well, the best thing to do, Mrs. Weathers, is just to give up. Give, give up? Yes, no use trying to fish in weather like that. Here, take this, Judy. Well, Mrs. Weathers, you seem to be in a pretty good condition. Oh, but... Uh, I'm going to have a spell, Doctor. I can feel it coming on. Oh, can't you do something for me? Well, yes, it just so happens that I think I can. Oh, Doctor. There have been some recent scientific discoveries uh, about spells like yours, Mrs. Weathers. Oh, tell me. And one of the most effective gastronomic agents has been... Yes, yes. Carrots. Oh, Carrots. So I think I'll put you on a diet of raw carrots. Oh, but you know I don't like carrots. I hate carrots. Well, we all have to do things we don't like, Mrs. Withers. Now, any time you feel a spell coming on, you just go on a diet of raw carrots for about three days. And after that, drop in and tell me how you are. Oh, but there must be some other... Nothing way. but carrots, Mrs. Withers. Okay. Just raw carrots. And don't come in until you try them for three days. Oh, yes, but... I... Goodbye, Mrs. Withers. <laughs> oh. Shh, don't laugh. Uh, <laughs> I'll bet you an ice cream soda it works. Yeah. <laughs> well, Judy, anything happened while I was away? Oh, a few things, but they can wait. Tell me about your vacation. Oh, there's nothing much to tell. I didn't do much. Mm, just loafed around the shack, I suppose. Did my share of loafing. You had a nice rest. Huh? Yes, sir. Why, I feel like another man. <laughs> you must be another man. Because Dr. Paul Christian wasn't on a fishing trip. He was in the city. Huh? What's that? Read this. Oh. Yes. Oh. Well, uh, to tell you the truth, yes, I... Yes, why don't you? I... I did go to the city. You see, there was a little trouble about... Oh, I'll answer it. Dr. Christian's office. Oh, yes, Jerry, I'm leaving in about 15 minutes. Meet me at the drugstore. Did I hear what? Swampy Martin's boy. He's... Oh, Jerry. Judy. But it couldn't have been Dr. Christian. He was in the city. Yes, it was. No. Yes. Listen. Listen to me. I operate on him. I had to. He was... Are you Dr. Paul Christian? Yes. My name's Thorne. I want to have a talk with you in private. <laughs> And while they have their talk, I have a word for you. Men, are you troubled with scalp dryness? Do you fear dandruff? Does your scalp shed on your coat collar? If you have any of these symptoms, Vaseline Hair Tonic will help you. Rub it briskly into the scalp with the fingertips. Use a rotary motion to loosen the scalp, open the pores, stimulate the blood flow. After a few minutes' work out of your scalp, shampoo your hair. And when it is dry, groom it with a few drops of Vaseline Hair Tonic applied with the palms of the hands and brushed in. This is a simple treatment. There's no magic about it. It is safe and sane and sensible. Vaseline hair tonic comes in a handy bottle in two sizes, priced at 40 cents and 70 cents. Get a bottle from your druggist tomorrow. Our story continues now with the scene laid in Dr. Christian's rooms behind the office. The time is late afternoon of the same day. And I had orders for my paper to get an interview or else. Oh, but why should a newspaper be interested in a thing like this? Why? When a doctor operates with kitchen knives on the floor of a fishing shack and saves a boy's life? Oh, that... Say, do you know what they told me at the central hospital? That it was one of the most remarkable pieces of surgery they'd ever seen. But go ahead. What happened after you operated? Well, there isn't much more to tell. For the next two or three days, I didn't get much sleep. Mm -hmm. But he was a strong and healthy boy, and he pulled through fine. Well, when it was well enough to move, I took him to the city, to Central Hospital, and he's doing splendidly. Well, what was your idea of being so doggone mysterious about the affair? The hospital said you were at the hotel, the hotel said you were at the hospital, and then I finally discovered you'd left the city. Well, you see, I didn't want Judy, she's my office girl, to find out. But I might as well have been open and about board. She found out anyhow. Mr. Thorne, if you have any dark secrets in your life... 
Don't ever move to a small town. <laughs> Say, you know, Dr. Christian, after hearing what they said about you at Central Hospital, I wonder what you're doing in a small town. Why are you wasting your time in a place like this? Have you ever thought of leaving? Well, yes. Yes, I guess I have. Then here's something to think about. Right now is the time to do it. When the news of this operation breaks in tomorrow's papers, you're going to be famous. Oh, I don't know. Well, I do. And you ought to be in this city where you'll have the opportunity to do the important work you can do. I'd like to get a statement for the paper about what your future plans are. You, uh, you want to quote me, you mean? Yeah, that's it. Well, you can say that I've been very happy here in River's End. Oh, it's such a nice little town. But then, of course, I know there's no big opportunities here. I know that as long as I stay, I'll just be a country doctor. So when do you plan to leave? Next week? No. No, I... I couldn't get away next week. And maybe in a month, huh? I'm afraid not. Fact is, I don't think I can get away at all. You can't get away at all. You mean you're staying here? But why? You see, well, a patient of mine, Mrs. Withers, she's going to have a spell. <laughs> And so we take leave of River's End for the present. Secure in the feeling that we can look in again on the old town next Sunday afternoon to find Dr. Christian at home among the friends and patients who could not do without him. Before we sign off, though, we want you to meet some of the artists you're going to become well acquainted with this winter. Rosemary DeCamp, who played Judy Price. Hello, everybody. It's fun working in this show, not only because I get a kick out of bossing Jean Herschel around, but because I'm one of the Cheeseboro Manufacturing Company's best customers. My pet use of Vaseline jelly is for my hands. After I've done any kind of housework or got my hands chapped and rough from outdoor sports, I apply it to get rid of the roughness and redness. You see, Vaseline jelly costs only 10 cents a jar, which is an item to a working girl. And it's the best remedy I know for chapped hands. Good girl, Rosemary. Now here is Noreen Gamel, who played Mrs. Withers. I'm glad to get a chance to speak to you in my normal voice, just to prove I don't complain all the time. Privately, I enjoy very good health, thank you. I was practically raised on Vaseline products. My mother used them on us kids for everything, from sore throat to skin knuckles. And last but not least, Gail Gordon, who played Roy Davis, the druggist of River's End. As a druggist, I have a chance to try everything in the store, but when it comes to hair tonics, I settled long ago on just one. Vaseline hair tonic. Keeps the scalp clean and healthy and lubricated and slicks the hair down just enough for good grooming. Thank you, all of you. Prices of Vaseline products mentioned on this program apply only in the United States. When you purchase Vaseline preparations, be sure to look for the trademark Vaseline on the package. If you don't see it, you are not getting the genuine article. Next Sunday at this same time, the Cheeseboro Manufacturing Company, makers of Vaseline preparations, will present Chapter 2 in the story of Paul Christian, the Doctor of River's End, with Gene Hersholt in the title role. Gene Hersholt appears on this program through the courtesy of 20th Century Fox. Arthur Gilmore speaking. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.